Hi everybody. So today we discuss an important reaction that is a transamination reaction. Trans trans amination reaction. So this transamination reaction is actually an important and an initial point in amino acid metabolism. So whenever you do an amino acid metabolism, the first thing that you have to learn is transamination. Trans means transfer. Amination means amino group. That is NH3 group. So this means the transfer of amino group is transamination reaction. So first things first. What is transamination? Transamination is transfer of amino group. Okay. So transfer of amino group. But the important thing that you have to realize over here is that there is just a transfer and no production of ammonia. This means ammonia will not be released. There is transfer of ammonia from one amino acid to another amino acid. So one amino acid will give its ammonia to an another amino acid in transamination reaction. In this process, they will require a keto acid. So there will be one keto acid also in the reaction. This means the transfer of amino group is transamination reaction where one amino acid gets converted to another amino acid with the participation of one keto acid and also another keto acid is produced in the reaction. To simplify, one amino acid and one keto acid take part in the transamination reaction transfer the amino group to second amino acid and in result there is a byproduct of second keto acid. Now if you see the arrows are on both the sides of the reaction. This means it is a reversible reaction. So the features of the transamination is first it is a transfer of amino group where one amino acid and one keto acid take part in the reaction to form second amino acid and second keto acid and the reaction is reversible. Since it's a reaction, we require an enzyme and the enzyme is a trans, trans, trans. Amination, so aminases. So the enzyme is transaminases. In the reaction transamination, the enzyme is transaminases. So it's an involvement of one amino acid and one keto acid, which will lead to transfer of amino group in the presence of enzyme transaminases. And it is a reversible reaction. Okay, this is the initiating point of amino acid metabolism. Now, there is a coenzyme in this reaction. Enzyme we know is transaminases. The coenzyme is PLP. Now what is PLP? PLP is pyridoxal phosphate. PLP is pyridoxal phosphate. Now this pyridoxal phosphate. Pyridoxal phosphate. It is a vitamin B6. So you have to remember that there is a coenzyme that is pyridoxal phosphate. So this reaction becomes more clear now as we go. The transamination reaction. There is one amino acid. There is one keto acid. And the reaction is reversible. 
leading to production of one amino acid, one keto acid. One amino acid, one keto acid, the reactions are reversible. You can see the arrows on both sides. And the enzyme is transaminases. And the coenzyme is pyridoxal phosphate. If I put this reaction once more, R1C, COO minus one amino acid, one keto acid. So enzyme is transaminases. This is pyridoxal phosphate. It will lead to formation of another amino acid, another keto acid. You can see very well that there was a transfer of this amino group to the second amino acid. So it's clear till now. There is one amino acid, there is one keto acid, the enzyme is transaminases, the coenzyme is pyridoxal phosphate and the other amino acid and keto acid is formed. Now the keto acids that take part generally in this reaction are alpha ketoglutarate, oxaloacetate and pyruvate. So these all are participants in the citric acid cycle. Why I am telling this is to tell you that this is always pre uh, present in the body. So anybody asks you what is transamination reaction, you will tell that there is one amino acid, one keto acid, transaminases, pyridoxal phosphate, reversible reaction. But the thing that you have to tell also is that it can be present in all tissues of the body especially liver, kidney, brain and heart. It will be there in cytosol and mitochondria both. It can take place anywhere this means. Now you will tell why you want to read this transamination reaction. You are all budding medical doctors. Why do you want to read this transamination reaction? Because this enzyme that is transaminases is clinically very important. Now how it is clinically very important because this transaminases reaction will take place with the help of the enzyme transaminases and these transaminases if you see can be ALT or AST. So it can be ALT or it can be AST and ALT or AST if you say ALT is alanine transaminases AST is aspartate transaminases So both these enzymes are important in diagnosing conditions especially of liver and heart like ALT is more specific for liver and AST being more important in cardiac problems so it is of clinically important and prognostically important enzyme and that is why we are learning this reaction Anything that is clinically important and significant, we should learn in biochemistry. Now coming to the reaction once again. So there was one amino acid, there was one keto acid, which took part in the reaction, which took part in the reaction with pyridoxal phosphate. So one amino acid, one keto acid 
taking part in this reaction forming one keto acid and one amino acid. So here the pyridoxal phosphate is getting converted to pyridoxamine phosphate and leads to the transfer of amino group from one amino acid to another amino acid. This is the importance of the reaction where you have to mention all the features of the transamination reaction that is it is reversible, it requires the enzyme transaminases. The coenzyme is pyridoxal phosphate. All amino acids will take part except lysine, proline, threonine, hydroxyproline. In my examination days, I used to learn this as PLT. So, proline, lysine, threonine and hydroxyproline. So, PLT for platelet, that is how I used to do proline, lysine, threonine and hydroxyproline. It is not restricted to only alpha amino acids. will also be there in delta amino acids like ornithine okay so this is and it is clinically important and it takes part in all tissues so this is the importance of transamination reaction now we will see one example of this transamination reaction. We will use the enzyme alanine transaminases. I remember it by two names of this enzyme. First is alanine transaminases. The second name of this enzyme, though not commonly used nowadays, is SGPT. So you have to remember that P L. So P L. That is a preparatory leaf for the exam that you get. P L. So this is the mnemonic for A L T or S G P T. So why it is important? Because this will help us to know the reactant and the product of this enzyme. So only remembering the enzyme will help you do the entire reaction. So A L T, alanine. So one and one amino acid is alanine. We all discussed that we require one keto acid. So that would be alpha keto glutarate. So here in the presence of AL acid alanine transaminases and PLP alanine ALT ka alanine ho gaya SGPT. So there will be one glutamate and one pyruvate it becomes easy because you know that you have to find the one g over here that is glutamate over here and pyruvate over here one p over here so basically the name of the enzyme helps to write the entire reaction because why it is important because at times when you are uh, under stress or under anxiety you forget the entire reaction this happened with me once but this name of the enzymes helped me to write the reaction. So this is the transamination reaction. One amino acid that is alanine, one keto acid that is alpha ketoglutarate help in the formation of one amino acid that is glutamate and one keto acid that is pyruvate. Now coming to the basic importance of this transamination reaction. If you see this transamination reaction leads to the production of glutamate. So most of the transamination reaction will lead to the formation of this glutamate. So that is why it is also called as funneling of glutamate. That is most amino acids will lead to the help formation of glutamate. And why glutamate is important we will see further in the further videos. 
So this is why it is important that transamination will lead to the formation of glutamate. All amino acids undergoing transamination, most of them, most classes of transamino acids, this lead to the formation of glutamate. Exception is aspartate. Exception is aspartate. So in aspartate, basically, glutamate is not funneled. Not all leads to the production in glutamate. But in generally, most of the transaminases, glutamate is formed. So that is why it is important. So basically, transamination reaction, the most important thing that you have to remember is it is a transfer of amino group. There is no production of ammonia. It is just a transfer of amino group. It is a reversible reaction. There is one amino acid, one keto acid that participates formation of in the products, one amino acid and one keto acid. The coenzyme is pyridoxal phosphate. It takes place in all tissues of the cells. And you have to remember the name of the enzyme. For example, alanine transaminases is also called as SGPT because when you write the example, you should know that alanine from AL, I have taken alanine. The product will be G for glutamate, P for pyruvate and T is for transaminases reaction. Alanine plus alpha ketoglutarate leads to the formation of glutamate and pyruvate in the presence of ALT and pyridoxal phosphate. This is the most basic and the most important step in the amino acid metabolism. Why and how? All the dietary proteins will give you amino acids in the body and these amino acids have to undergo transamination reaction to form another keto acids and in turn lead to formation of glutamate. Now these keto acids are why they are important because they will help you in production of energy or they can undergo into glucose synthesis or they can go in ketone body formation or in fat synthesis or they can lead to the production of non-essential amino acids so that is why this is important that Amino acid that undergoes transamination, which leads to the formation of another keto acid, will form give energy, glucose, go for ketone body or fat formation, or in a non-essential amino acid production. So that's all. Thank you.